Ryzen versus Intel for video editing. I have tested all of the latest Ryzen CPUs and Intel CPUs, that's 13th gen and Ryzen 7000, in case you're watching this and there's some newer versions of these out. And I have tested it also with two of the most popular video editing applications, Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Now, which CPU is better for your workflow? The answer is not as simple as you think, and you'll see why once we start looking at some benchmarks. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now, before we get started, I need to talk about test bench setup and my testing methodology because I've made some changes in there and, you know, because everything's rerun since last year because a lot of things have changed both for AMD and for Intel. For motherboard I'm using the Z790 Pro Art for Intel system and X670E Pro Art for the AMD system and you might have remembered that AMD had this issue with too much voltage and things going on to the motherboard and the BIOS revisions have both of them actually have given a lot of different BIOS revisions out there since last year since 12 months ago and which basically means that they've improved the voltage to the CPU most likely less voltage means you know lower temperatures and better clock speeds overall better stability once their algorithms are figured out you know can we actually undervolted a little bit at first because when a new CPU launch comes out at first the motherboards usually push out quite a lot of voltage just to keep it stable but that comes with a higher temperatures so the latest BIOS that has been released on September 2023 next of all the RAM which is very very important as well so I am testing the RAM as 5600 mega transfers per second exactly the same RAM and 5200 mega transfers per second for the AMD and you might be saying hey that's not you know fair for AMD because it's a lower RAM actually it's exactly the same kit of RAM Kingston Fury Beast it's 6,000 mega transfers per second CL34 RAM kit from Kingston, but I'm actually down clocking it for both of the systems because I wanted to run at the integrated memory frequency, what the integrated memory controller can keep up with, because that also tests some of the features of the CPU. Because I could put, um, I don't know, 6,000 megahertz, for example, what the RAM kit will do. Because of the integrated memory controller being different on both of these CPUs, it's not fair to go above the warranty spec. So basically the warranted spec for Intel will be 5600 and for AMD 5200 mega transfers per second. AMD itself says that we recommend Expo 6000 mega transfers per second kit because that's the most optimized and best performance but even that is out of the warranty or factory spec. So I wanted to test it both for the factory spec because if you want to, you can overclock both of these over and higher, but at standard, the Intel will have better memory, you know, capacity and support because of the integrated memory controller being better and AMD is a little bit weaker. So I wanted the testing results to showcase that feature also of the CPU because that's a very important factor, especially for creators when we're looking for stability and the highest capacity and fastest RAM speeds. And it's tested with two sticks, not four sticks. And when we take it even further to four sticks, Intel will have better support just because of the integrated memory controller. It's easier to run higher frequencies on memory with Intel system than AMD just because of the integrated memory controller will support better specs there. And both of the frequencies 5200 and 5600 have their platform um, kind of XMP profile. So it's XMP for Intel and Expo values for AMD to give them the both chance of succeeding or the best value or the best results. Both of them have Gen 4 SSDs and the OS SSD and the project drive have been separated. And the GPU is Asus RTX 3090 from last generation. If you want to check out any of these parts, I'm going to leave it linked in the description below, as well as Tech Notice merch. Go pick it up. 
Firstly, let's have a look at the DaVinci Resolve. And here you can see all of the seven CPUs, the extended overall, standard overall, 4K, 8K media scores, and GPU as well as fusion scores laid out in there. So if you want to reference back to that, but I want to dig a little bit deeper into it. First of all, let's have a look at the extended overall score, which uses a lot of different resolutions and different clips on this benchmark. And you can see that the 13900K and 13700K are on top of the pack. Interestingly, even higher than the Ryzen 9 7950X, which is a 16 core, like all performance core CPU. So those Intel 2 CPUs overall in extended overalls perform the best. So the 3700K is about 6.3% slower. And then the 7900X is about 10% slower than the 13900K. As you can see, the Ryzen 9 7900X, 7950X and 7700X perform within 1% in the extended overall score for DaVinci Resolve. So looks like DaVinci Resolve doesn't know what to do exactly with all of the you know, P cores that are above eight cores because Ryzen 7 has eight and 7950X, which is actually slightly slower than 7900X. But bear in mind, there's margin of error there as well. So they perform essentially exactly the same. But interestingly that eight and 16 cores perform right next to each other in the extended overall scores. And the 13600K, which actually has more cores than the 7700X, is actually performing slightly lower, about 4% lower than the 7700X. But the 7700X actually has two more extra P cores. The 13600K has more, you know, cores overall, but there's hybrid architecture, uh, E and P cores there. So interestingly, DaVinci Resolve likes more P cores than a combination of cores. But now looking at the standard overall results for DaVinci Resolve, we can see that the Intel CPUs are right on the top there. And the 13600K is about 12% slower than the 13900K and the 13600K and all of the Ryzen 9s and 7s perform within 1% of each other, which means they're, they're exactly the same. So standard overall, that's where which just 4K means that if you have 16 cores or 12 cores or eight cores or 6P cores or 14 cores, what 13600K has, then the difference isn't there actually that difference. Yeah, you might have difference in exporting score in certain codecs, but generally overall, the performance is pretty much the same. The Ryzen 5 7600X with only 6P cores is lower there. So when you're working with 4K media only, perhaps getting a more expensive processor doesn't make that big of a difference. But now let's look a little bit deeper into the benchmarks result because the way they calculate the standard and extended overall scores might not tell us the whole story. So looking at the 4K media score just in the here right now, you can see that they actually line up pretty well what the standard overall you know, results were. 3900K has the best score than 13700K. Then actually the 7900X and 7950X have swapped. The 7950X is a little bit better than the 7900X, as you can see, 188.4 compared to 182. Then we actually have the 13600K and then 7700X, which is actually a little bit different order compared to the standard overall score. But looking at the 8K media score, things get even more interesting. So the 13900K is actually not on top of the chart. As you can see, the 7900X, the 12 core CPU, has the best score, 195.4. Then comes Ryzen 9 7950X. Then we have Ryzen 7 7700X and then 13900K. And then 7600X, the 6 core CPU, and then 13700K and 13600K. That means that if you're working with 8K media, having a more performance cause is the most important thing because the 13900K, even though it has eight P cores that are actually better than the eight P cores in 7700X, but for some reason with the E cores there enabled as well, it might get a little bit confused and the 7700X is better. And interestingly, 
Again, the 16 cores isn't as good as the 12 core, what we can see on the Ryzen 7900X. So bear that in mind when working with 8K media. Now GPU effects line up exactly like it would be on the standard overall scores. The better the CPU, the better the GPU effects as well, essentially. And exactly the same on the Fusion scores. So if you've got more cores, which you can see on the extended and standard overall score, the better the CPU. More cores and faster cores will equal exactly there on Fusion Core, almost like a multi-core performance uh, is what you can see on Fusion scores. They just line up very, very well down there. So depending on what you're using the most and which resolution of media you're using, uh, hopefully this will help you understand which one is the best CPU for you. Now moving on to Premiere Pro, and here things are very, very interesting as well. Bear in mind, I have tested both of these systems with the iGPU enabled as well. So if the software can it can utilize the iGPU as well. Unfortunately on AMD side the iGPU doesn't give you anything but on the Intel side we actually unlock quite a bit of performance with just enabling the iGPU which I've said this a million times, don't get a non-IGPU version for your Intel CPU because for video editing, lose out on performance. The iGPU on Intel side actually gives you better timeline performance and certain codec support as well that isn't supported on AMD, neither on Nvidia. For example, 10-bit 422 H.265. We have hardware acceleration on Intel, but not on AMD or Nvidia. GPUs. So here you can see all of these stats laid out, all of the long GOP intra frame and raw scores as GPU effects on standard and extended scores. I want to look at extended overall first and we can see that the 13900K is quite a bit faster than the fastest Ryzen CPU. So the Ryzen 7950X is about 8.7% slower than the Intel 13900K. Now the second place is 13700K, which makes sense as well, which is about 5.3% slower than the 13900K. And the 13600K, the i5 performs extremely well for Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro really can utilize all of the E cores, P cores, iGPU, everything that the CPU offers, everything gets utilized. And you can see that it's better than the 7900 X that has a double the amount of P cores. The 13600K only has six P cores. 7900X has 12 P cores, but the 13600K is about 0.7% faster, which is very, very interesting. Bear in mind, each benchmark has been done five times at least, and then the average of the scores have been calculated. Now the 7900X, 7700X, and 7600X don't look as good in the extended overall scores for Premiere Pro. Moving on to the standard overall score, which means that we have lower resolutions, meaning like 4K up to 4K and not higher resolutions. And here we see similar results, but now the 13900K has even bigger leap over the 13700K, about 7%. But now the 7950X with the 16 performance cores performs essentially the same as the 13700K on the second position. And the 7900X with the 12P cores isn't far away from the 7950X and you can see that the second, third and fourth position, they are within one to two percent. So they perform very much the same. Then a bit of a dip down is the 13600K which is about 14.5% slower than the 13900K. So that's uh, quite a big now difference there from about 7 to 8.5% on the second to fourth place but then 15% on the fifth place is quite a big there. And then another big jump back now is the 7700X with only 8P cores. You can see here in Premiere Pro, having more cores actually is helpful in certain codecs, whether you're encoding or decoding footage, it does help there with pure force of just forcing through whatever you need to do. Now, depending on the codec, uh, just so you know how the Premiere Pro benchmark here works, they test different codecs depending on what codecs you're using, you know, whether you're using cinema cameras or what type of compression even the cameras have, whether it's mirrorless similar cameras or some just normal H.264 or raw codecs, uh, if you know what I mean. So now we're looking at the long GOP extended and standard score. We can see that the Intel CPUs perform quite a bit better. Now you can see that the order is that all of the Intel CPUs are 
top three and then the rest of the Ryzen CPUs just line down exactly, you know, Ryzen 9s, 7s and 5s, exactly that. Now looking at the intraframe score, the results are again slightly different. The 3900K leads the pack there and you know, there's no question about it. It's slightly faster than the 7950X, which is on the second page and the 13700K, which is the third place there. It kind of performs the same. And then 7900X and the rest of them come down there, which is about the same what, what you see. But interestingly, still the 16 cores on the Ryzen 7950X on intraframe will not outperform the 13900K. Now, when you look at the raw score, when you're working with raw footage, which can be extremely demanding, there are some interesting things to look out for. In the extended overall scores, it's exactly the same as what we saw on IntraFrame or on the long GOP scores. But on the raw standard, so where we have basically just lower resolution raw footage, the Ryzen 9 7950X actually has a better score than the 13900K. So depending if you're using uh, what resolution you're using, have a look at exactly the footage that Puget Bench tests for extended and standard scores. And also the same story with the Ryzen 7900X, which is actually better than the 13700K, even though the extended overall score will put it as third, but on the standard overall, the 13700K is fourth, as you can see. So depending what you're doing, the P cores might be better if you're using like low resolution RAW, then the Ryzen CPUs are actually better, but in the rest of the cases, Intel will win just because of the iGPU. So generally for Premiere Pro, Intel is actually better and pretty much the same results for DaVinci Resolve, but Depending on certain scenarios, actually the Ryzen CPUs outperform Intel CPUs depending what you do. For example, if you're working with 8K or higher than 4K, then the Ryzen CPUs are actually better for DaVinci Resolve. In Premiere Pro, Intel's actually a little bit better still, but for DaVinci Resolve, definitely the Ryzen has the better edge over there. Just unfortunate that the iGPU is not getting utilized at all or the media engines on the iGPU are not like utilized that could make it even better there. There's a lot of other softwares to cover. So let me know what you'd like me to cover next in the comment section below and I'll make sure this is covered. Now, pretty soon there's gonna be a full best CPU for 2023 coming out. So stick around for that because then we're gonna look at all of the different applications and different generations as well will also include the 12th gen which i'm testing right now because it still takes a lot of time a lot of updated software and things it's still going through the test bench setup a few cpus to go and then we have the full set out there also the next generation intel and amd are coming out any moment now so stick around for that reviews are coming out very very soon as always if you do want to build yourself the best bank for buck create a pc then check out the build guides in the description below it always leads you to the latest best build guides available there so whatever your budget is check it out there also the products that i'm mentioning and the prices that i'm mentioning in the video are actually discounted now because the prices are cheaper now even though the inflation in the world is actually worse but the prices are cheaper which is interesting so tech actually does get cheaper not more expensive which is good news go check it out if you're a creator and you want to build yourself the best pc thanks guys for watching i'll see you in the next video Bye bye